Welcome to a technical tip for IronCAD. And this one is on some positioning default behaviors. So this is primarily on how we actually create uh, positional dimensions or constraints between parts and parts, parts and assemblies, and even features and assemblies. So uh, this is not going into the full details of how we can do all types of constraints, but just some of the basic uh, understandings of how IronCAD works. So uh, in this model, we have just you know, a, a simple floor a floor model here. Uh, we have uh, an assembly here that contains a, a pin, base, and a top uh, up there, the light blue area. And then we have our little holder that we want to uh, create some references to, so like dimension references or things like that. So I'm going to show how this works by default and then some of the, the uh, additional behaviors. So uh, the way IronCAD works, uh, you know, when you select first, you'll highlight the assembly, which is the uh, yellow color. Then it goes into the blue highlight for this, our CN color for parts. Features will be handles and you go down to the face level. That's what we call our drill down. However, when you do a positioning, even if you have something selected by default in IronCAD and you try to do a constraint, for example, we'll select down to our, our part here and we hit our position constraints, notice it deselects that. Why, why it's doing that is it's trying to find the most uh, or the common parent for the elements that you select. So for example, when I select this particular uh, cylindrical surface and I select this cylindrical surfaces, uh, it knows these two parts have a common parent, which this is this assembly, and we'll apply the constraint underneath that. So we're just gonna create a coincident, we hit okay, and you'll notice that that constraint is actually now created uh, here between uh, the positioning part, assembly pin one, and assembly base one, base. So it says the common parent is assembly one and puts the constraint there between the two. So it knows that it's underneath there and knows how to handle that uh, behavior. You can also uh, change your filter here if you like. You can actually can see the constraints under parts and assemblies as well. So you can kind of uh, get a, a better idea for that. So when you expand these uh, these pens, you can see where, where the constraint exists under there. So this was underneath the part level under this assembly to the uh, base part here as well. So you can see those two constraints are created there. Uh, anyway, so that's how it, it does it by default which is normally the common uh, behavior that you want. So even though this is an assembly level here, this is a part level. Um, if I selected this part here, example, same thing. If I turn on my position constraints, uh, notice it deselects. I pick that front face and say I want to made it to here. It knows that that constraint needs to be between this assembly and this part. So for example, in this case, uh, when we look at this, this constraint here and look at the naming, it's tied to assembly one base and the holder directly. So you can see it's the parent is now, uh, in our case, the scene level. There's not an upper level assembly, but it's the scene level. But that's the, the common parent that it found. You can also click on these things and you can see that there's two arrow dimensions that are added. Uh, it tells you what it's uh, tying it to. So for example, if I select this down, it's tying it to that assembly. And I could also change it to go down to the base, which is the blue part inside of there. So you can actually change that behavior to who you want it to connect to by selecting on those arrows. And it can change on how it moves and constrains your geometry. Uh, in most cases, you want to have the whole object uh, move together. Uh, for example, uh, you can change the behavior, like I said, by changing the, the arrow dimensions. Or you can go to our options and you can actually go to in the interaction and you can do an option called keep selected shape as effective owning object when creating dimension. This is found under 3D Smart Dimension uh, Constraints. So if you select that, this will change our default behavior of who it adds the owner to. Now, IronKid does have some additional intelligence, which I'll show you here with this. So what happens here is, so if I select down to this part, we want to create this dimension. I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm going to create this, select this part, and now when I click on my Smart Dimension Tool or Position Constraints, notice it doesn't deselect. So now it's actually creating the dimension between that part and the other part that I selected. And you can see this again by selecting on the dimension and clicking on the down arrow. And it's created it to the top. Now IronCAD actually has some intelligence. So it knows that there was a constraint that we created on this assembly level, which is this coincident constraint. So it kind of knows there's some sort of constraint there. And if I create this dimension and I try to edit this, notice that even though it's to that part level, it will still try to move the other elements because there's not they're not fully defined, but they have some sort of constraints there. It, it treats it all as one object still. So it has some sort of intelligent behavior to give some more, what of a little bit more predictive result there. So, however, if I just uh, delete this constraint just for time being, just to kind of show this point. Now, if that didn't exist, there's no constraints between these two except for this particular constraint. Now, again, this is at the part level. Now, if I edit this guy, notice it only moved that part. So this is usually not wanted. So most people don't want this behavior. That's why we turn it off by default, because sometimes you'll move the parts below assemblies 
across parents and it doesn't make sense is, you know, think of a, a, a hinge that you're going to put on a door, a, a door frame hinge, you know, uh, the, the hinge has multiple parts, has two, uh, two sides and a pin going through it and it connects to a door. You didn't, you don't want to move just one of the hinge pieces to the door. You want to move the whole assembly over. So typically you're going to move the group elements to another uh, group element. So that's what the assembly containers are for us and some of this intelligent behavior to give you the predictable results. Um, but you can do this uh, in some cases to drive certain things based on other geometry. So if you have some sort of relation that you want a particular part to move with another part, even though the assembly on the other geometry stays still, you can do so by doing this cross parent constraint. So this is something we do in IronCAD that's not necessarily found in other systems to support that. But uh, we do support that in IronCAD that you can do that cross parent uh, constraint. So in our case, uh, we don't want to do that for this one. We want to actually move this assembly over. And I'm going to show you another thing with even feature dimensions. So the same thing uh, typically applies with features, feature dimensions. When you have a feature, you're referring to an, another feature uh, position on that part or uh, to the part edge itself when you're placing the, pin, the, the features. But I'll show you another way to do that. So first, let's go ahead and move this guy over. Again, we can use uh, a number of tools. And we'll use our smart dimension. I'm just going to select this guy. And I'm going to select this edge here, and I'm just going to move it over for now. And then I'm just going to move this down inside of here. So in this case, we have our uh, our um, <clears throat> pin selected, our concentric to our, our blue part. So it's moving with the, the assembly and that hole. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this guy just for a second because I want to show something here with the feature level. So the feature levels uh, can also uh, do the cross parent uh, relationships. So for example, in this hole, is on this blue part, but I actually want it to maintain here and, and I'm, because I'm not sure where this needs to go. I don't have a set height. I want to make sure that holes there and then I can maybe move this up and down to my desired location where it needs to be. Not a realistic example here, but anyways, you, you'll see what I mean. Uh, so I can go down to uh, this hole. Again, I can add a smart dimension. In this case, I'm gonna hold my shift key down and get the center of that face and I'm gonna select the center of this face here to get a uh, dimension. So what I'm gonna do is actually set that to zero to move it and lock it. Uh, to, so that they're essentially collinear. I could have done a position constraint collinear between there as well, but I'm just doing it with my smart dimensions. But this case, now this feature belongs to the blue part. And now it's actually referring to not only the geometry on the blue part, it's actually going out of that, out of the assembly, all the way to a part uh, completely in a different relation. So if, for example, if we look at uh, that hole, uh, let's see where that hole go, uh, that is on our base here, um, that H cylinder, so this constraint, here is actually going up out of this assembly all the way into another part. So it's completely cross parent constraints. But the unique thing about that, so is if I take this uh, assembly here and I move it up and down, notice when I solve that, oops, I forgot to lock that, I think. Oh yeah, I forgot to lock that dimension. So let's edit that again. <laughs> let's uh, edit that smart dimension and actually make that zero and lock it. I forgot to lock it, so it's actually a constraint. So now when I move that uh, assembly uh, inside of here, it will maintain that hole. So you can see that hole is staying uh, positioned. Wherever I move that blue part, I can just move it down to the desired location and it's always gonna be stay there. And if I unhide my other geometry, so let's go ahead and show all here, you can see that our pin is gonna stay in the, the right location as well. So even though I'm moving uh, this assembly up, that hole is staying there. You can see the highlight of the pin go up. When it solves, it's going to move itself back down to the hole because it's referring to that part geometry. But the hole is staying in place because we set it to be locked before uh, before I set it to, <laughs> before I had it. I didn't lock it when I first created it, but now it's locked, so it's moving like that. So that's kind of an interesting case that you can do cross parent constraints from you know, a feature level. Uh, you can do that. You can do it at the part level. However, there are some behavior that we try to give predictable results because you usually want to have the stuff moved together as an assembly. You know. It's usually a, um, the same level or parent level um, constraints that you're creating. So that's one thing we try to do in IronCAD inside of here. So that's some unique things that we do and I uh, just wanted to highlight those. So again, yeah, by default, this setting is off in the tools, options, interaction under 3D Smart, or 3D Smart Dimension Constraint. This is off uh, just kind of to protect the user so they don't get into that. So, But they can manually change those constraints by selecting on those and selecting the arrows for whichever one that you're on, you can select that and change. You know, if there's assembly behind it, you can change those levels around. Uh, so that is a, a capability that you can do after the fact, or you can change the option to try to create that on 
decoration when having something selected you when you create your dimensions or your constraints you can do that but again that's just kind of the basis for some of our positioning uh, hopefully this you find this useful and it helps you out in how we position our geometry in our kit